Open up the door, it's Dave! Who? The question for the day is, why does SpaceX reuse its rockets? And I think the answer is kind of obvious. It's because it's a cost-efficient way of going back into space. So they don't have to uh, keep creating new things. You can reuse them, and it is a more efficient way of doing it. But keep in mind that NASA, for its part, when they had the space shuttle mission, used to reuse the booster rockets too. But that was a very cost prohibitive thing. Why? Let me explain. Let's take a look at what the space shuttle program looked like. Each of the space shuttles had two solid rocket boosters, or SRBs, attached to the outside, connected to the external fuel tank. These were used to provide the thrust to get the shuttle into low Earth orbit. Once they reached the desired altitude, these two SRBs would be ejected from the main part of the shuttle launch system and fall back to Earth. There's an explosive bolt that would actually detach them and send them away. Now, it was determined that these SRBs could fly 10 times each, but that's sort of a misnomer because these booster rockets were actually made up of six cylinders that were stacked together and then bolted into place. So each one of these cylinders could be reused with other cylinders from other missions. That's just the way it worked. But in reality, there were 136 successful launches of and all but two of the booster rockets were recovered. The two were actually lost at sea due to a navigation error, and then they took on water and they sank. But NASA was fairly successful at retrieving these and recovering them. Of course, two other ones were lost during the Challenger incident, but that's a separate issue. In any event, these would come back to Earth, splash down in the water, and then two ships, the Liberty and the Freedom, would go out to retrieve them. Now, this was an expensive operation where it required many man hours of people going out, divers going in the water, attaching ropes, getting it ready, and dragging it back to the shore. And after that, the segments were then detached from one another, the bolts were taken out, and they were put on a train and sent to Utah. Yes, I said Utah. That doesn't seem very efficient, does it? There's a lot of history about why that happened. Let's, let's talk about that for a moment, too. The thing you come to realize is that NASA is a political organization, and anything they're doing has to go through a series of congressional reviews. And Congress is run by people who want to help their home states. Orrin Hatch was one of the leading senators from Utah who had a very strong interest in the space program, but only if it benefited his home state of Utah. So he put in a provision where at least some of the space shuttle effort had to be routed through Utah. So what they, the way they did that is they put out to bid for companies to uh, refit these boosters to fuel them and get them ready to fly again. And the company that won was Morton Thiokol. And their headquarters is in Utah. So it was a win for everyone, except for us as taxpayers, because we were paying large sums of money to send these booster rockets all the way to Utah and then back just to satisfy this need. It seems kind of silly. And when you look at SpaceX and what they're doing, it's a much smarter approach. At the plant in Utah, they would actually inspect them, make sure that they were safe, repaint them, check the tolerances on all the bolts, put in new rings as needed, and then put the solid fuel inside it. Now, the video I'm showing here is not from Morton Thiokol. This is from the original construction in Alabama, but you get the idea. Then they would put them back on a train, send them back to the Space Center in Florida, where they would be stacked up inside the vehicle assembly building. This is a many hour process of assembling each of the two components, lifting them into place, bolting them down, and then assembling them so that they have the rockets at the bottom, the fuel pieces all the way along the top, and then the cone section all the way at the top part. They would mate that to the fuel tank, and then they would lift the shuttle into place. So you get a sense of just how complicated this operation is and how much time and money it took to do it. For comparative purposes, let's take a look at the Falcon Heavy, which is actually three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together with a payload on top. The Falcon 9 rocket can get about 5.3 million pounds of thrust and can lift a payload of about 140,000 pounds into space. The space shuttle had about 6.8 million pounds of thrust, but could only lift 54,000 pounds into low Earth orbit. So as you compare the two, you realize that they're equivalent in terms of what they're able to do. Keep in mind that SpaceX is a for-profit company, so their objective is to minimize the cost as much as possible. So what they've done is they've said, okay, we're going to reuse the whole rocket, the entirety of it. We're going to take it, we're going to clean it, we're going to get it ready to fly, and then we're going to assemble it and put it on the launch pad. From there, it launches, 
it goes up into space. Two of the rockets, the ones on the side, similar to what the SRBs did, detach via explosive bolt and fall back to Earth. And then a short time later, the third rocket detaches as well, and it starts its journey back to Earth. The first two, that were the external rockets, go back and land at landing zones one and two back at Kennedy Space Center. So they are literally right there, ready to return and go through their next cycle. The third booster stays attached for a while longer because they want to get up to a certain altitude. At that point, that rocket will detach and head back to Earth, and it lands on a drone ship that's out at sea. No personnel required. This is fully autonomous. It's a vehicle that goes out in the ocean and just sits there. This particular booster will land on that drone ship. That drone ship, after it recovers the booster, will then head back into port right there at Cape Canaveral. Now you have all three boosters, which are then taken via truck back to the processing facility where they're cleaned, refueled, and ready for their next flight. And because these are all Falcon 9 rockets, they can be used individually to launch a smaller payload into space if that's necessary. So a lot of times you'll hear about a Falcon 9 launch where the payload goes up into orbit and the one booster rocket returns. Depending on the trajectory and the altitude it needs to get to, sometimes that booster will land back at the Kennedy Space Center and sometimes it will land at a drone ship, but the cycle is always the same. That's just the way this works. I think you can probably see that the cost is going to be lower for SpaceX, but let's take a look at it anyway. The projected cost was about $211 billion for the entirety of the program. The cost per launch was estimated to be about $450 million for the launch itself. The problem is that the launches kept getting more and more expensive because the costs of all of these activities kept increasing. And the per launch cost of the space shuttle by 2012 had ballooned to $1.6 billion per launch. That's amazing. Um, Morton Thiokol had put out a report. There was a whole study of what it costs to turn around the solid rocket boosters. It's a technical engineering related study that gives a cost analysis and all of these things. When you read through it, and look at all the numbers, you realize that it's very cost prohibitive. And there was an internal memo that reportedly was circulated around that said that Morton Thiokol realized it would be cheaper to produce new rockets every single time than to go and refurbish all of these constantly. Whether that's true or not, I think you see the problem here. It's just that it's a very expensive thing to have done, and NASA was really spending a lot of money unnecessarily to a large degree. But times were different. The costs were different. Thing, the world was different. We didn't have this ability to reuse rockets in the sense of the way we do them today. That's just the way it worked. So when you look at these rockets, you realize that there's much more to it. For its part, SpaceX quotes a price of $90 million per launch of the Falcon Heavy. It's about $62 million for the uh, Falcon 9, but for the Falcon Heavy with the three rockets, it's about $90 million. So it gives you a sense of what they're saving in, a, in order to get the payload into orbit. And because they're making a profit, they're more than happy to let someone ride share. If there's space available, someone can get it at a lower cost in order to put their small object into space. So it really is cost efficient to do this versus the space shuttle. And by the way, as of early March 2024, you can see that how much reuse they've gotten out of these rockets to date. It's really pretty remarkable. What's your point, David? <laughs>